This is a Shrixon AD333, in my opinion, the best-selling golf ball ever. And this is a Titleist Pro V1X, widely regarded as the number one ball in golf. But for double the price, how much difference is there? Let's find out, and let's do it now. Hi everyone, James Robinson here guys. We're gonna get straight into it today and we are gonna test the Titleist Pro V1X against the Shrixen AD333. Guys, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Make sure you do consider hitting that subscribe button below. Then you won't miss the golf related content that brings you guys 365 days a year. And if you're not new to the channel, welcome back. Cheers. Right, we'll kick things off with closest ball that lands to me. That one, the Shrixen AD333 triple three and guys i would usually do this on a launch monitor as well but to be honest we all know that this is where it counts out on the golf course so let's see what we get the lowest score with the 20 pound a dozen shrixen or the potential 50 pound a dozen pro v1 it's a lovely start with the shrixen that felt wonderful Position A with the Shrixen. Well, a tiny bit left with the Pro V1, but that's fine. Both in play. Let's get on with it. Now, whenever I do ball comparisons or ball tests or product tests in general, I always think to myself, how much difference do I need to see in my game to warrant buying that product instead of the other one? And I think that with golf balls quite often because, again, I think how good do you have to be to see a huge difference in the golf ball that you use? Should you buy a refurbished golf ball? Should you buy a second-hand golf ball? Should you just buy a cheap golf ball off eBay that you're going to lose a couple of times in a round and still play some half-decent golf with? But then if you're at a certain level, if you're a low handicap, if you're a mid handicap and you're yearning for that consistency, should you be paying top dollar for a golf ball, such as the Pro V1 and Pro V1X? So as you can see, we have a Shrixen right in the middle of the fairway there and a Titleist Pro V1X that's actually just missed the fairway. Quite unlucky really, because the fairway is only there. Now the Titleist Pro V1X is a four piece golf ball with a urethane cover. So generally what that means, it's gonna have a nice soft feel, you're gonna have a good penetrating flight and generally the ball will rise up into the air. The Shrixen, however, is a two-piece golf ball with an ionomer cover, which is a little bit more of a harder plastic. So generally that means the ball's gonna set off that little bit higher, that little bit quicker. Right, we hope bloody hell we have 170 yards in here. Did not expect that. How much difference will the four-piece and the two-piece and the elastomer and the ionomer make to your game? I really don't know. I got all the big words right then and then messed it up at the end. Right, not a flag you want into attack. So we're just gonna go for middle of the green. Or we're gonna pull it onto the flag. Please be the club. We'll take that all day. We'll take that all day. And you see, it's no surprise that a lot of the price that you pay for the Pro V1 will go into their R&D, and it will do with the Shrixen, but a lot of the price for the Pro V1 will go into the marketing because it's the number one ball in golf. And for it to be that, they have to kind of they don't all play it for free, do they? Let's be fair. I'm sure there's quite a few players, PGA Tour-wise, that get paid to play it. Whereas the Shrixen AD333... Oh, be good. Be good! Sit! Short. This is where I start to see... Because there's like a little bit of... You see that going, to, yeah, you can, yeah. Hmm. And this is where I'm quite pleased actually that I haven't done this in a studio just primarily to tell you the numbers. If you do want to see that, get in the comments below and ask me and I will do it. Literally, if one of you asks, then I'll do it because I'm quite interested myself. But you have to be out in the elements to see the ball flight, to see what happens. That was the perfect shot. It just, it kind of went straight up. Looked like it was going long. It went that high, the wind hit it and we're now short. To be fair, neither of them are birdie opportunities, but still. So, so then I'm thinking, is it going to affect the score anyway? 
shouldn't do really. Realistically there, the restriction was bang on line and the title list, actually that's a tiny bit short as well. However, I did think that was kind of slightly more penetrating. Let's play a decent chip, hopefully a decent put and get away with two fours. I'll know what's coming here. And it is quite a funny one because do you pay big bucks for your golf ball so you get that green side control and that nice soft feel? The last thing you want to do is play a chip and it run out when you think it's going to have a bit of stop on it. I oh, was taking that all day, that was wonderful. 20 quid a dozen as well. Guys, while we're lining this put up, get in the comments below and let me know how much do you pay for your golf balls per dozen. I'm really interested to know. I think golf products are that much price driven at the moment, and rightfully so, because money's hard to come by. Would you go and pay £50 a dozen or would you go and pay 20 quid for 12? I'm also well aware that 12 is a dozen. Well, if you go to the pro shop, it might give you a baker's dozen. You never know. Save you some money. Right, come on. Nice two putts for a par. Have we got the line? Go in! Oh. Now a huge factor for me when I do choose my golf ball is how it feels off the putter. And I must say that the Pro V1X does feel really soft off the putter, which is exactly what I do like. The Shrixen's actually closer in three, if that means absolutely anything at all, which I don't really think it does, but let's roll these in. Part. Uh, two fours on the first, one for 50 quid, one, oh, I nearly pulled it at the camera there, one for 20. Hmm. Now, not all choosing a golf ball is marketing. They do have technology behind them, and generally that can help you with the game. And let's see exactly what the brands say about these balls. So the Titleist Pro V1, total performance with high flight. That's pretty much everything you would want, isn't it? The benefits are long distance with a consistent flight, low long game spin and high trajectory, drop and stop short game control that's trademarked by the way drop and stop and soft feel the features are a soft cast urethane elastoma cover system which is what we mentioned earlier on about the covers it's a fast casing layer 2.0 zg process dual core that sounds like a computer doesn't it and spherically tiled 348 tetrahedral dimple design i said tetrahedral i think i've said it right but i got it first time as well so what does shrixen say about their ball shrixen say the ad333 is a premium Premium. I thought it was like more budget, but premium, lower compression golf ball that delivers superior balanced performance for golfers who demand exceptional distance, feeling greenside control. Now, for 20 quid, if that's right, I'd take my hat off. I have to take my hat off. My hair's terrible. I didn't want to take my hat off. Hats off to you, Shrixen. So that has a new fast layer core, spin skin with serm. I have said that right, CIRM, and also speed dimple. Less drag and more lift boosts overall distance and accuracy, even in the toughest wind conditions. I did feel like that one got caught up in the wind though. And the funny thing is about all that technology I've just reeled off for you, hopefully in about 20 seconds, is, do you see it? But then I suppose with any golf technology, do you see it unless you're in a fitting and you're on the launch monitor? We made two fours on there. Hopefully we'll make a couple of decent numbers on here, try and get under par for the video. The real thing is you'd have to test it over like 10, 15 rounds, playing almost like a robot, playing pretty well. I can't do that. I don't know if you, if you guys can then by all means, let me know your findings. Okay, I absolutely love this tee shot. And I think this time we'll go Pro V1 first because we went Shrixen first last time. And the interesting thing is whenever I do Golf ball videos with the guys from Titleist they are always really helpful. They're always helping me out with what the golf balls are supposed to do. Should you get fitted for a golf ball? What golf ball should you get fitted into? And the answer they always come out with is pick a golf ball that matches your budget. Um, I mean, that Pro V1 isn't matching everyone's budget, but then I suppose the other golf balls in Titleist lineup are. But why don't the people who buy the AD 333s buy the cheaper Titleist balls? Don't know. Don't know. Right, come on. Love this tee shot. A bit high and faded. That's a long way right of where I wanted it, but we're safe. Yeah, that's fine. Probably got a little bit 
arrogant over that one, to be honest, a bit aggressive. Right, Shrix on. I do love the colour of the Shrixen. Yes, both these golf balls are white, but the Shrixen almost has like a blue tint to it, so you can see it in flight a little bit more. Oh, that's delightful. Probably did learn something off the first swing there, but that sounded incredible. Really good. And for me, if I can hit shots like that with a 20 pound a dozen ball, does it even really matter? You see, I'm going to start playing a few club competitions here at Woolley Park Golf Club. And should I start using maybe a Shrixen AD333 instead of a Pro V1 and use that for the test, see if I can go and shoot one under par, two under par with a Shrixen, because I can definitely go and shoot 80 with a Pro V1 if we're on a bad day. But 80 with a Shrixen, would you then blame the ball in your head? Golf. See, it's in there, isn't it? So two golf balls on the fairway. We have the Titleist Pro V1X here and we have the Shrixen AD333 just up there. Now, if we are taking marks, that's two tee shots to the Shrixen and it felt really solid on both of them. Is that down to my game? Is that down to my swing? Absolutely, yes it is. We have 123 to the front, 137 middle. Flags just on the front. This is about a one, about a 130 shot. And if we're thinking logically here, this is, I mean, am I gaining anything from having a 130 shot as opposed to a 100 shot? Maybe I'm going to be hitting a gap wedge instead of a pitching wedge. But realistically, it shouldn't have that much of a say. We're going to hopefully use the bank. This is where I feel more confident, and this is interesting. So the flag here on the second hole is on the front. Now, this is a two-tier green. I always, always, always use that bank if the flag's on the front because I have more of a wider landing area or a bigger landing area. I'm more confident doing that with a Pro V1 X because I know it's going to stop, drop and stop TM. But also, I'm more confident that it's not going to fly on me or it's not going to get caught up in the wind and not go the distance we want it to. That should be perfect. Go on. Ooh. I think it's like behind the bunker, which isn't a bad thing, at least it's not in it. And with the Shrixen, I'm getting way too close to that ball there, we have 97 to the front, 109 to the middle. So again, about 100 yard, like we said, with this bad boy. Could we go sand wedge? I think we'd have to hit it too hard, really. Let's trust the ball, trust its capabilities. I've come out of that, but it's safe. Yeah, not the shot we wanted, and again, more down to me than potentially the ball there. So as we go up here, I can now see them both. We've got the Pro V1X just over the bunker and the Shrixen just on the right hand side of the green. So two pretty decent shots there, some nice stopping power with the Shrixen. If I would have landed it on that bank where I wanted it to, it would have probably have taken the bank and come down. And the Pro V1, it's quite wet here actually, as you can see, so that's kind of stopped where it was. Usually that might go forward and back, but two decent attempts. We'll go kind of match play scenario and furthest away first, even though the Pro V1's not quite on the green. Come on, let's have one of these in. Let's have both of them in. I'm a huge fan, by the way, of the lineup mark with the AD333. That, I love how kind of blunt it is. I love how bold it is. And like the Pro V1's just a little bit more refined. I think they're trying to make it look more premium with that really fine Titleist writing. Whereas the Shrixen's like, yeah, I'm 20 quid, I'm a Shrixen, bang, line me up. Done. Hit it, hit it. Oh, you had it, James. That's a part. Now we can't line this up because it's not placing. It is a little bit moist though. On the edge, do not fall in there. We'll repair that. A bit of mud on the ball as well, actually. And turn, oh. So greens in reg-wise, that's actually one apiece as well. So two pars, two fairways with the Shrixen. This is close, actually. Comment below, guys, is this closer than what you thought it might have been? To be honest, it's just... I think, to be fair, you should be able to play with pretty much anything. And I'm starting to think... I'll tell you in a minute. 
I'll tell you in a minute. Okay, I'll tell you now. I'm starting to think that if your main hobby is golf and you spend a lot of money on your clubs and you have lessons and things like that, I think a premium ball definitely helps to get every little bit out of what you want. I think if you're gonna go and get a brand new set of clubs, you're gonna have one lesson a month and you're gonna go and practice a lot. Why would you scrimp on the ball? I mean, if you lose a lot of balls and you're new to it, totally get it. The AD333 is perfect for a lot of people like that. But if you're trying to get every little ounce of ball speed you can out of your golf clubs, if you're trying to get the spin rate in the exact window that you want, I definitely think a premium ball is gonna help you do that. Now we've chosen the Pro V1 today because it's the number one ball in golf and it works for the title. But it could be a TP5, it could be a Callaway Chrome Soft, it could be any number of golf balls that you might potentially use. Just check what technology in them, check what the cover's made out of, more importantly, go and get fitted and test them for yourself because what ball works for me might not work for you, might not work for Bob, might not work for Chris. Nothing really works for Chris. Right, we'll go this one first, which is the AD333, and this is a drivable hole if we get it away. No, it's safe, it's actually a good, good miss, but not, uh, not the flight we wanted. Let's see what we can do with Pro Evo X. And again, this comes down to my consistency. It doesn't come down to, there's nothing wrong with the ball there. I'm gonna try and hit the same shot again. Miles better. Cutting nicely. Still won't be on the green, but it'll be a little bit closer. And you always want to be a bit closer if you can, don't you? Now, one thing I'd say is to have some fun when you do this. Test golf balls when you're playing with your friends. Test them in competition, depending what competition you're in and how much that competition means to you. If you are thinking about really working on your game and getting your golf to the highest standard possible, then I think using a premium ball will definitely help you. But again, go and get fitted for that golf ball. Don't just go and buy the number one ball in golf or the ball that Rory uses or the ball that Phil Mickelson uses. Make sure it's a ball that suits you. I feel like I'm repeating myself a bit now, but it is important. So we have two golf balls here. The Titleist Pro V1's a bit further up, but the AD333 is still around the corner. I think we've actually just missed the fairway here. Are we? Or is that on? Uh, now there's one for you guys. Comment below. Is that on the fairway or not? I think it is actually. Looking at I think we are, I think we are. So that keeps up the record of the Shrixen hitting all the fairways. And funnily enough, we've got a miles better angle in with the Pro V1. I didn't know where that flag was. So that is more just by luck rather than hitting the good shot. If the flag was kind of up left, then it wouldn't really make that much of a difference what we hit off the tee. What have we got here? 60 yards over the bunker. Land it 50, let it release a little bit. Let's make a few birdies. Just like that, that was lovely. And I do think if you get used to playing the golf ball as well, like I know there, just to let it run out a little bit, if I was using a Pro V1, I might be thinking, get it a bit higher, try and get some spin on it, play more of a romantic shot when, didn't need to, didn't need it. I think what we'll try and do is play just the same shot. I mean, this is only, this is 30 yards. Same shot with the Pro V1. Delightful. Yeah, that stopped very, very quickly. And that's just two good shots. I mean, I could complain there that the Pro V1 stopped a bit quick for me, but that's what a Pro V1 does. That's what it's supposed to do. Let's see what we can, can do with both of these putts. Now, to be honest, guys, the be all and end all here is that I've really enjoyed my day. <laughs> and I hope you've enjoyed the day as well. It doesn't matter to me really what I'm using and I mean, I get that every time I test a club, I get that whenever I play golf with my friends. And realistically for the video, we've got those putts to be under par. So yet again, in a video, what does it come down to? That, again. So if you're gonna spend some money, spend it on one of them that you can use. And I hate to say it, but we're actually closer with the Shrixen that I wanted to run out. The Pro V1 stopped a bit quick. I told you I wouldn't moan, didn't I? Come on, these are two makeable putts. Make percentage on these would be about probably 30, 35% on tour, I think. Ah, 
actually thought we had that halfway. Right. Shrixen to take the win. One for the budget. Come on. This to save some incredibly dull golf. Got it. I can't believe that went that way as well. That's aim point for you. That's one under par with the Shrixen. And from a closer shot, level par with the Pro V1X. Obviously, that's a three hole match. And if we were going to do this test, we should do it over 18 holes, over nine holes in a simulator on a fitting. So you guys tell me what you want to see in regards to tests like this, regards to comparisons. Do you want to see me go and play in club comps with a Shrixen, with a Titleist, with a TaylorMade and see what I actually shoot and score? Because my handicap here and my club comps here are more for you guys to see what golf clubs and golf equipment does under pressure when it matters, even for me. And I don't really put myself under that much pressure. But guys, if you have enjoyed that, smash that subscribe button below. Also, leave us a like. That'll help this video get to more golfers who find the channel, and that'll help me. If you have enjoyed it, then comment below and let me know. And let me know what you think. What golf ball do you use? How much do you pay? Why do you pay it? Why do you use the golf ball you use? And apart from that, I'll see you all at the same time tomorrow. Oi! Missed it.